North Atlantic, January 1945. In a single month nine German U-boats vanished beneath the waves. Half fell to a British invention that made no thunderous warning and once the range was fixed, missed almost never. The Squid, a three-barrel, forward-throwing anti-submarine mortar, launched 309 ELB projectiles ahead of the ship in a mathematically exact formation. A sonar link set their fuses in real time. The outcome was staggering. A 50% kill rate, roughly five times more lethal than the depth charge. In months, the U-boat force lost the initiative. Commanders who had once ruled the sea lanes now faced a weapon that calculated their position, depth, and moment of destruction before they heard a single splash. This is the story of how calculation outgunned explosive power. Atlantic Convoy Lanes, Spring 1942. Merchant columns burned under moonless skis from Halifax to the British Isles. In 1942, a lone U-boat sank some 8 million tons of Allied shipping. Royal Navy records showed just a 7% probability of a successful kill per depth charge attack of 14 attacks for one success. Escort captains called it blind bombing beneath the waves. The problem was simple and brutal. ASDIC, the Royal Navy's sonar, could detect submarines out to 2,000 yards. But as the escort closed, the submarine would pass under the hull and the ship's own propellers would cavitate, deafening the receiver. For 30 critical seconds, the target vanished. In that half minute, a skilled U-boat commander could initiate an emergency dive, alter course, and slip away. Depth charges rolled astern and detonated where the submarine had been, not where it was. The Admiralty's ASW reports quantified the cost. Contact was lost in 93% of attacks before detonation. Meanwhile, German patrol reports recorded soaring U-boat morale. Wolf packs tore through convoys, 20 ships in 10 days in March 1942. Convoy commodores watched cargoes burn, knowing the calculus. 14 attacks for a single kill. Yet beneath those grim numbers a new trend emerged. Better HFDF radio direction finding began to intercept U-boat transmissions and funnel escorts toward wolf packs. Centimetric radar on 10 cm wavelengths started spotting surface submarines at night and in rough seas. Detection was improving faster than attack accuracy. The Royal Navy could find U-boats, but finding them mattered little if they vanished before the weapon landed. British scientists and tacticians turned to geometry. The theoretical fix was simple, strike forward, not aft, fire while sonar contact stayed alive. Let the submarine run into a pattern, not away from it. But making that theory real demanded a revolution in weapons, fuses, and computing, a way to predict position during the weapon's flight time. In spring 1942, such a weapon did not yet exist. The solution, however, was already being sketched in the margins of Admiralty notebooks. The instrument that would blunt the U-boat's edge would be less a bigger bomb than an equation. Western Approaches, December 1942. The vanishing contact problem consumed ASW planners. Commander P.T. McGrath distilled months of reports into one devastating line. We attack where he was, not where he is. The tactical reality was stark. An escort steaming at 15 knots covered 225 yards in the 30-second sonar blackout. In that time, a U-boat diving at emergency speed descended some 30 feet while advancing about 100 yards. By detonation, the target occupied a volume roughly 300 yards long, 100 yards wide, and 50 feet deeper than its last fix. Depth charge patterns tried to brute force coverage with volumes. A standard run released 14 charges in a rectangular grid, but each contained only about 300 lb of explosive and had a lethal radius near 20 feet. Missed by 30 feet and the hull survived. Missed by 50, and the crew might never know they had been targeted. In a memorandum dated 5 December 1942, physicist Albert Tucker proposed a radical alternative. Throw explosives ahead of the bow while sonar contact remained solid. Use echo ranging to place charges precisely. Link fuses to real-time sonar. The idea violated centuries of naval practice. Gunnery had always attacked astern for ASW, 
but the mathematics were undeniable. A forward firing system would eliminate the 30-second blackout, permit continuous tracking through the engagement, and convert bombardment into precision strike. Design teams at Woolwich Arsenal and the Directorate of Miscellaneous Weapons Development tested forward-throwing projectors. Early mortars launched contact-fused bombs in circular patterns ahead of the ship. They proved a key principle, hold contact through the attack, but the projectiles were too light to reach deep boats. Contact fuses gave no warning on a miss, and the circular spread wasted munitions on empty water. Still, the Royal Navy adopted the system as hedgehog and rushed it into service. Designers, however, were already drafting its successor. To maintain echo through detonation demanded a different geometry. Liverpool Dockyard, March 1943. The 24 Spigot Hedgehog entered convoy work on modified escorts, a distinctive forward array throwing small bombs that detonated only on contact. HMS Westcott recorded the first confirmed kill on 14 April 1943. U-581 struck and broken by a Hedgehog salvo. Hedgehog's combat kill rate rose to about 25%, three times better than depth charges, and captains celebrated the ability to watch the target on their displays through the whole attack. But Hedgehog's 65LB bombs lacked the punch for deep divies, and a clean miss left the submarine unalerted. The Admiralty's October 1943 memos demanded more. Heavier charges, depth detonation tied directly to sonar range, and a multi-barrel mount for concentrated patterns. Weight and explosive power should replace guesswork with certainty. Engineer George Hickman led a multidisciplinary team, naval architects, ordnance experts, and mathematicians to build that certainty. The project was urgent. The designation was squid. Funding was unrestricted. The requirement, range, depth, trajectory, and detonation must be computed automatically from the sonar track. For the first time, sonar would not merely see the enemy, it would decide when the enemy died. Lachfenine, April 1944. Three 12 inch barrels locked in a welded frame were fixed at 45 degrees above horizontal. The mount weighed nearly five tons empty, over nine loaded. Each rifled 12 FT tube fired stabilized ballistic bombs, 43 inches long, 390 LB apiece, carrying roughly 207 LB of torpex. Torpex, a mix of TNT, RDX, and aluminium, was about 50% more powerful than TNT alone. One squid bomb packed more punch than three depth charges. The bombs were ballistic, not rocket-assisted, fired by cordite charges. Barrels fired in one-second sequence, placing the three bombs in a triangular impact pattern ahead of the ship. Range, about 250 yards. Flight time, roughly six seconds, but the true innovation lay in fire control. The AS sonar type 147 linked directly to the squid mount through a mechanical fire control computer. The ASW computer mark I the operator held the submarine in beam tracking while the sonar updated range five times per second. Range, depth, ship motion, roll and pitch, all were fed into the computer. The device solved the three-dimensional targeting problem, computed projectile trajectories, and crucially set the bombs, hydrostatic fuses automatically to the predicted depth. If the target was at 260 feet at launch, the computer set the fuse accordingly. Should the submarine change depth during flight, the next salvo would compensate. The three bombs struck the sea in a triangle about 60 feet to a side, and sank at a predictable rate. At the calculated depth, all fuses triggered simultaneously. Three detonations, each equivalent to 10 depth charges, collapsing on the submarine's predicted position. Trials at Lochfenine between April and June 1944 recorded extraordinary results. Of eight firings against practice targets, four produced confirmed kills, three inflicted severe damage, and one missed due to operator error. Squid's combat kill rate approached 50%, more than twice Hedgehog and seven times the old depth charge average. Commander J.G. McDonald observed, the system removes guesswork. Success depends only on holding contact and allowing the computer to finish the calculation.
the human role was reduced to the final decision to fire. Production authorization followed in May 1944. The Admiralty ordered squid for the lock-class frigates then on the ways. Lock-class construction yards reallocated fittings and electrical runs to accommodate the new mount and its ASW console. Portsmouth, June 1944. Order A-145 called for 150 squid mounts and 15,000 bombs. The contract dwarfed ordinary ordnance spending. Barrels were precision bored from high tensile chromoly alloys and proof tested to twice operating pressure. Mounts had to absorb sequential recoil without flex. Vickers manufactured recoil springs to tolerances of half an inch. Bomb warheads were cast, x-rayed, and assembled to tight quality controls. AIC transmitters and mechanical fire control units were hand-assembled from brass gears and linkage by specialist firms. Logistics became a campaign of its own. Mounts and munitions shipped by rail and sea to Clyde dockyards, bombs crated with sawdust and shipped under armed guard. Installation required replacing an aft 4-inch gun position on lock-class frigates and squeezing the ASW computer into the anti-submarine compartment with waterproof conduits running to the mount. By September 1944, 41 ships carried squid. By November, 78. By January 1945, 117 ships were operational with the system. From blueprint to fleet primary weapon in under nine months, production continued through the European War's end. Totals. 195 mounts installed, 15,200 bombs delivered. Combat operations recorded no manufacturing-related failures. Britain built fewer destroyers in 1944 than before, but every new escort could kill far faster than its predecessor. If Biscay, 6 July 1944, HMS Lichkillen, a newly commissioned lock-class frigate, detected a submerged contact at 2,200 yards. The ASDIC return was strong, a large metallic echo moving steadily. The contact was U-736, a type VII boat returning to base after a patrol in which she had sunk three merchant ships. Lieutenant Commander Reiner Dirksen commanded 49 men. The submarine was deep, conserving batteries for the run home. Lichkillen altered course to intercept. Able seaman Thomas King held the echo easily despite moderate seas. Range drew down from 2,200 to 1,200 yards. The U-boat appeared unaware of pursuit. At 1,200 yards, the officer ordered the squid mount readied. Below, stokers and loaders heaved three 390 LB charges into the barrels, secured retaining rings, and connected electrical leads to the fuse setters. The ASW computer initialized, dials glowing as range and depth updated. 